Welcome back today to the second part of the Safe Moon lawsuit. So I got some comments on the first video about the Safe Moon lawsuit uh, court documents uh, about not reading that good. Well, I can understand that uh, since I have dyslexia. And for you who know what that means, it means that I don't read that fast. So, and since English is not my first native language, but I'm still pretty much fluent in it. Okay, so the thing with me is I have dyslexia. I do also have a master's degree in law, so LLM. I do have an IQ of 136, and I'm also a financial advisor. So, does dyslexia means that I cannot do anything else? No. Dyslexia means that I just read a bit slower and maybe not as good, but because I read not every line, but now when I read out loud, I have to read every the word okay and so I saw that around 50% of the viewers I have is actually safe moon rednecks and hillbillies so I have here your safe moon army right this is the safe moon family we all see them we all say hello safe moon oh wait we have to look at this one is this the Safe Moon Redneck family? Yes, it is. The finest things of a product of patience, hard work, and tradition. Wow. Is that John? Is that Papa? Okay. Or maybe that's you and your brother because it surely looks like that. Okay, so going back to the Safe Moon lawsuit. Number 10. On behalf of investors who have purchased SafeMoon tokens in the United States. So that, that would be all the Rednecks SafeMoon family. Plaintiff brings suit to recover from defendants the consideration paid for the SafeMoon tokens, together with the interest thereon. Damages resulting from defendants' wrongdoing and this argument of defendants' ill-gotten gains. The parties, plaintiff, 11. Plaintiff Christopher Rakukas is a resident and citizen of Massachusetts. Okay. 12. Plaintiff, plaintiff made this made his first purchase of Safe Moon tokens on April 27, 2021. In a series of purchases that day, he acquired a total of 13 billion blah 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 Safe Moon tokens for a total of $69,502. Woof, that's a lot. Plaintiff's subsequent, 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 subsequently sold 1 billion of his tokens on May 1st, May 2nd, 2021. Okay, th there you had it. There you saw my uh, dyslexia again. But do you understand this text? Yes, yeah, of course. And May 13th. At a loss, he continues to hold 11 million 502 blah 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 safe moon tokens, which are currently worth <laughs> 0 0.00000. Okay, nothing. Approxim approximately 2% of the price of which they were purchased. So he hasn't converted it to the V2. But well, that's fine. I actually checked my uh, old safe moon wallet if I haven't sold it. Uh, it will, would. Let's see here. How much was it worth? I think it was like $34 or something. It was really, really okay. So I bought almost 10, 10 billion at a price uh, $13,871. So today it's only worth $37.95. That's actually 99.73% down. Yeah. Um, let's continue. Defendants 13. Defendant Safe Moon LLC is a privately held company which is headquarters located at 364 North 500 East Provo, Utah 84606. 14. Defendant Safe Moon US LLC is a privately held company uh, with 
its headquarters located at 1022 West 2200 North Pleasant Grove, Utah 84062 15. Defendant Safe Moon Connect LLC is a privately held company with its headquarters the, the same as U, Safe Moon US Okay, let's see here is there anything that's interesting here? Def 16. Defendant Tano LLC, John Corona's own company, is a privately that I think Papa said he was uh, working for when he was the CTO or something at uh, Safemoon. Okay, same headquarters address as the others. Uh, here we have Defendant Safemoon LTD, it's a privately held company. That was incorporated on April 8, 2021, which is headquarters at 2222 Wenlock Road, London, England, NY 7GU. Okay, and then they have one there. Let's see here. It says the only listed director and shareholder for the Safe Moon entities in the United Kingdom is an Italian national. Oh, Castigliano Foini. Publicly available information about Foini. Foini and the UK entities is limited. However, a search of the UK government company information website indicates that a now dissolved privately held company, Target Company Development Ltd., was located at the same address as the Safe Moon UK entities. Notably, that company's only director and shareholder was Braden John Caroni's mother, Jennifer Diane Caroni. So maybe they should. Uh, Sue her too. Okay, no. I don't know. Similar, similarly, according to bankruptcy filing submitted by Mrs. Caron. Oh, so Mrs. Caroni. Mrs. Caroni. Why else not say his mom or Jennifer? I don't like those titles. Mr. Mrs. Yeah. It sounds so old fashioned. Like you call you don't call your teachers Mr. or Mrs. or Miss. You say their first name. Like Yeah. Uh where were we? Down here. And her husband. Oh, so even John's father was part of the bankruptcy here. In 2013, the Caroni family home is listed at... The Caroni family home is listed at... Listen now. This is the, as somebody called doxing. 364 North, 500 East Provo, Utah, 84606. See summary of schedule. Amended Schedule C property claim Caroni uh, 13 13777 BFK. This is the same address for the Safe Moon LLC entity. Upon information and belief, Caroni, with the aid of his parents, set up the company corporate structure in a perfect Posefully complex manner to hide their ownership interest in the various safe moon entities in the US and UK. So my brain says that his parents helped him commit fraud. Who else would have done it? So his parents, oh the former CIA agents, my ass. If you're a CIA agent, you shouldn't say that. Or even if you're a former one. It's just a big bullshit. They were probably fired because being too incompetent and committing fraud and everything. Well, that, that's just my thoughts. If it's true or not, how would I know? Okay, let's continue here. Uh, 20. Defendant Braden John Caroni is a resident and citizen of Utah. Living in Provo, Utah, Caroni serves at the, as the company CEO. And he exercised control over safe moon and directed and or authorized directly and indirectly the sale and or solicitations of safe moon tokens in the to the public hmm. okay these are the defendant jack hines uh defendant ryan ariaga defendant joel Whitrow. Okay, this one I never heard before. Let's see what it says. He's a resident and citizen of California, living in San Diego, California. Oh, he was the co-COO of the company until September 2021. So I didn't know that. Defendant Jank, Hank Wyatt. Okay. 
defendant Thomas Papa Smith. Where does he live? He lives in New Hampshire. Okay. 26. Defendant Kyle Nagy is a resident and citizen of. He's a citizen of Florida. Is Florida some country? Okay. Uh, 27. Defendants Caroni, Haynes, Davis, Ariaga, Wittroyal, Wyatt, Smith, and Nagy are collectively referred to as the controller defendants. Okay, that's good. Here, defendant David Portnoy is a city resident, resident and citizen of New York, living in New York City. He acted as a promoter for the company and the Sigmund tokens. Defendant Jake Paul. Everybody knows him. He's not a good boxer. He's oof, yeah. Okay. I tried boxing a few months when I was 16 years or 17 years old. But yeah, I would still beat him. Uh, defendant Nick Carter, Baxter's voice. He's back again. Okay. Defendant DeAndre Soya Boy. Okay, never heard of him actually. But they were all like promoter for the company. Defendant Ben Phillips is a resident and citizen of the United Kingdom, living in Wales, United Kingdom. Also, okay, I think I heard him. I'm not sure. I heard about him. Uh, defendant Miles Lil Yatsi, never heard of him. Uh, Georgia. Okay, so Redneck. Defendant Daniel M. Keen is a resident. Re resident and citizen of New York, living in Buffalo. Uh, and all these, Portno, Paul, Carter, Way, Phillips, McCollum, and Keem are collectively referred to as the promoter, def promoter defenders, defendants. I'm really getting um, thirsty by talking like this. Jurisdiction and venue, 36. The court has jurisdiction under 28 paragraph USC because plaintiff bring claims under section 5, 12, A1, and 15 of the Securities Act of 1933. Paragraph 15 USC 77 E 77 77 O. This court also has the jurisdiction over the Securities Act claims per pursuant. Pursuant of section 22 of that act, ID paragraph 77V. In addition, this court has subject matter jurisdiction over plaintiff state law claims. Pursuant, 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 sorry, to 28 paragraph USC paragraph 3032 because there are 100 or more class members, so there's 100 people suing SafeMoon. The amount at issue exceeds five million dollars, US dollars, and there is minimum diversity. 37. The court has personal jurisdiction over defendants as a result of their acts occurring in or aimed at Utah in connection with the offer or sale. sale of unregistered securities. In addition, SafeMoon, uh, Defendant SafeMoon LLC, SafeMoon US LLC, SafeMoon Connect LLC, Tana LLC, and Caroni reside in Utah and are thus subject to general jurisdiction. 38. Venue is proper pursuant to 15 USC paragraph 77V and 28 USC paragraph 1391. Okay, in Sweden when we, we write paragraph and citations of law and things like that, we always put the paragraph after, but we sometimes pronounce it in before, like we would put the paragraph here, after here, but we were still pronouncing it like paragraph 13, something like that. But here is like paragraph first, but yeah, Swedish grammar. In that this is a district wherein one or more defendants is found or transacts business. Where the offer or sale of SafeMoon tokens took place 
and where a substantial part of the events or omissions giving rise to the claims occurred. According to Safe Moon, according to Caroni, Safe Moon Global Headquarters is, lo is located in Pleasant Grove, Utah. In addition, the United States District Court for the District of Utah is an appropriate venue for class members who bought Safe Moon tokens through the Safe Moon wallet under the wallet's term of service, which states, "You agree that in the event we are unable to settle any dispute with you." Then all court or arbitration proceedings shall be held in Utah, U.S. only. Okay, actually that that is a bit wrong because if it's in the U, if it's in the EU, we can have the proceedings here. Choose the venue. Um, international law. Th this, yeah. Uh, but now. I haven't uh, worked with international law, I just remember parts of it from law school. I could be a bit wrong, but yeah. I'm not giving you legal advice in this one, I'm just giving my opinion. Uh, I'm gonna get right back to you. So I'm back, I had to go away and help my daughter, she wanted an ice cream. So. The next part here is factual allegations, uh, background on crypto assets and decentralized finance. So I think actually I will do a separate video about that because that's just common knowledge. But I will talk about it. And then you're gonna go back here. Let's go. Let's see here. It's about Bitcoin and Ethereum. And here, Safe Moon tokens and Safe Moon business. Safe Moon tokens. This is what I'm gonna go through. Uh, not the next video, the video after that. Or maybe I'll do it in the next video. But let's see what I'll do. So, until next time. Good morning, good day, whatever. <sighs> That's so boring to say that. Yeah, but I'm not, not a YouTuber. I'm just doing this because I don't think it's correct what Safe Moon is doing or done to people. Many people lost money. It's just like with Doquan and Luna. It's like everything sh almost shows that he, he is the one who shortened Luna. He's the one who made it crash. And he did it just because of his own greed. And here in Safeway you have also greed. You have greed from John Caroni and everybody else. It's just a big Ponzi scheme. The only one who's gonna make money are the one who got in on it before anything. Before any marketing, before anything, that is the per people that makes the most money. Even if uh, Safe Moon token goes down a lot, they will still make money. But you, you and I, or anybody else who invested, will just lose money. Okay, I didn't lose money on Safe Moon. I got out. I got in when it was really low last year, and I sold it before the V2. Um, yeah, it's just, if you have a crypto project, you have to first have in mind that it's for the investors. It's for the people or who wa wants to support you. Don't think about making money first. Like, I don't even remember, but how much was his salary as a CEO? Like, he shouldn't be making more than maybe, like, after taxes, maybe like $2,000 a month. That, that's what he have to live with. Like, many startup companies, the CEO and the, everybody who started the company here in Sweden, they don't even have a salary for the first, like, one or two, three years. They live on the bare minimum they can. No luxury, no nothing. It's like, why do you need the luxury things when everybody else who invested cannot even, it loses everything. It doesn't make sense. Like, if you want a company to succeed, you shouldn't uh, do what John Caron is doing. 
It's the opposite. You should do the. Yeah, my daughter called me again. <laughs> she is so young. Uh, she needs help all the time. So I'm trying to do this. If you hear her voice calling me, Papa, Papa. Well, you know I have to run to her and help her. Okay. Where were we now? We were about how you start a business or and what you shouldn't do. Like you shouldn't do what Jump Caron is doing. Like it's not good. Like the investors are the people who helps a company move forward. If you do not have investors or customers, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't matter how many people likes it. Because as we can see right now, Safe Moon doesn't go that good. But still, everybody who in the Safe Moon army, everyone says, oh, they're good 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 blah 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 yeah because they're down 90 percent of their investments and they don't want to sell so but well uh until next time i'll hope you're good and uh yeah let's see where this lawsuit goes i really hope all the plain plaintiff wins i really like and as we had up here what was it five million dollars somewhere Okay, okay. Uh, I really want it to be five million dollars per plaintiff. So if you have one hundred plaintiffs, and everyone would get five million dollars, well, you can guess how much that's gonna be, or you, you can like guess. I mean, what will happen to Safe Moon? Ooh, good thought. Yeah. Okay. Until next time. Goodbye.